ഹബീബനാ മുഹമ്മദ് In the past couple of days, since the beginning of this week, there was a special event that is generally celebrated nationwide or by some internationally. What was that event? This is not my actual khutbah, so you can talk. What was that event? What was it? Earth Day. I was going to say 420, but... <laughs> <laughs> Earth Day works too. What's the purpose of Earth Day? Celebrate the Earth. Celebrate the Earth? In which sense? <coughs> Try to preserve Earth. A couple of days ago, I was invited by Queen's College to speak on Islamic Awareness Week. And when I was talking, I mentioned about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the environment. I believe, I believe it was 420 that day. <laughs> and um, there were two women that came out of the crowd later on. They were not Muslim. And they said that, you know what? We... are actually writing a book on environmentalism and its roots and its teachings in different religions and we're actually we actually want to write a book from the side from the side of Islam as well and what does Islam say about preserving the earth now because my time is not I don't have too much time and I know you all have to go to classes I'm I'm going to say a couple of points and I'm going to move quickly through them Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ad-dinu an-nasiha Deen is nasiha what does nasiha mean What does nasiha literally mean advice advice but what's the arabic words have a deep meaning to them right for example tauba comes from tauba ya tubu tauba means what repentance repentance as forgiveness but tauba actually comes from the arabic word tauba ya tubu ay raja'a yarji'u meaning that to come back So when a person does tawbah, he moves away from Allah and then he comes back to Allah. So he he repents from Allah, he repents to Allah, he comes back to Allah. He makes a sin, he goes away from Allah and then he returns to Allah. So there's a hidden embedded meaning in every word in the Arabic language. Now, the word nasiha, advice, there's an embedded meaning in there. And that is to wish well for others. To to want good for other people. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ad-din an-nasiha din is wanting good for everyone wanting good so the sahaba said liman ya rasulullah for who nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam hadith goes on and at the end he said li ammat al-muslimin for everyone does it make a difference for every single person you want to wish good and you want to do good at the same time rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in another hadith said al-iman bid'u wa sab'un al-sharba i mentioned this many times before iman has many branches highest branches nobody knows la ilaha illallah that's the highest branch of iman i guess i didn't say many times before wa ima wa wa ima wa imatatu al-adha 'an at-tariq wa adnaha imatatu al-adha 'an at-tariq and the lowest level of iman that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said like if you want to know if the the worst muslim is lowest iman what would be his quality the prophet said imatatu al-adha 'an at-tariq If he sees something on the floor and it's it's rubbish or garbage, he will remove it from the path. 
This is the lowest level of Iman. Imagine the level of Iman of that person who throws that garbage in there for the first place. Imagine the level of the Iman of that person who threw the garbage in the first place. So, speaking on earth, now forget about humans, forget about Muslims, forget about non-Muslims. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, even told us to look after inanimate objects. He even told us that when you go somewhere and you are even in the state of war, in the state of war, there are, there are very few laws. But the Prophet وسلم, said, make sure you do not burn livestock. Make sure you do not go burn the trees of a nation. Do not destroy the landscape that has not done nothing to you. Preserve the land you live in, number one. So now we've established the fact the Prophet Sallallahu told us we must look after inanimate objects. Number two, the next level is those animate objects that cannot think. Those animate objects that cannot think. There's a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that there was a woman in Bani Israel and she was a prostitute. She, that's how she made her money. So she would get intoxicated and she would commit prostitution. One day she's walking back and there's a dog, right? I think I mentioned this story before, no? Yes, no? So see, there's a dog there. And uh, you know, the dog over there, it was thirsty. So she went, she took in her, she went to her shoe, she put water in her shoe from the well, she pulled it out and she gave it to the dog, the dog drank it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that very moment forgave all of her sins and entered into paradise. This was the reward of a prostitute woman was granted for giving a cup of water to a dog. Imagine the reward you and I will get if we give a cup of water to another human being. Jannah is expensive, there's no doubt about that. But in order to reach that level, there are small actions we do that change our spirituality, that change who we are. You see, just praying salah, doing zakat and hajj, that's not enough. The angels are doing that, do that way better than you do. When the angels do tawaf, they do it way better than you and I do. When they pray salah, they do it way better than I, you and I do. When we pray salah, we say, Allahu Akbar, and then we're like, okay, I got an orgo afterwards. <laughs> you know what, I think that kid next to me, I can cheat off of him in the exam. Our thoughts are all over the place. And as soon as we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum, then our thoughts are formulated against as if we didn't even pray salah. Our salah goes into autopilot. So, Islam is just not worships. Is, is, this not, is this not ibadat? But it's our character as well. It's who you and I are. Because we're representatives. Islam literally means to submit. And every one of our actions are submitted. And Rasulullah came and taught us how to wake up in the morning, how to sleep in the morning. You know what, how to even use the bathroom. He taught you how to do that. We have a very different lifestyle. We have a very different personality. So going on, Rasulullah wasallam, there was this woman in his life. We know the story, it's a famous story. And she was throwing garbage on the streets. And she became sick one day. She used to put garbage in his path. She became sick one day. And then the Prophet also went to visit her. Now imagine, you know that, you know those kids sometime in college or high school, they make fun of you, right? They, you know, they, they, a lot of some, I'm not saying a lot of you guys are dorks, but I'm saying uh, there's probably a couple of dorks, you know, dorky people around here, right? Amar, are you? Amar? <laughs> Please put your phones on silent as well. <laughs> So, now, someone comes and makes fun of you, and now the couple of years later, you see them having a difficult life, you get all happy, like, you know what, that guy was making fun of me, serves him right. And they say, don't make fun of nerds, chances are you'll end up working for one of them, right? The guy who made my sandwiches in middle school, 20 years later, he still makes my sandwiches. <laughs> On the plus, oh no, the guy who takes my lunch money in middle school, 20 years later, he still takes my lunch money. But on the plus side, he makes great sandwiches. <laughs> right? We get happy when someone else, when it's our turn. When we have that chance, we take those jabs, we take those hits. But the Prophet ﷺ, this woman who oppressed him, this woman who literally her mission, her daily activities, you know how you, you, some of you guys play games and some of you guys put makeup on, hijabs on, whatever it is, her daily activity was 
that I'm going to take garbage and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make his life hell for him. But when the tables were turned, he came to her. My time is almost done. When the tables were turned, he came to her. And he went and he asked her, how are you doing? Everything okay? You doing okay? And at that moment, she was surprised. And she became Muslim. But the point I wanted to bring from here, the aspect I began off was with the Prophet wasallam, even making us conscious that the earth around us, we have to take care of it. We have to value it. When you go to Mecca, some of the, some of the basic rules of Mecca is that you can't cut the trees of Mecca. You can't pluck the branches of Mecca. You can't kill animals in Mecca to preserve. The Prophet ﷺ showed us one ideal town. But doesn't mean that every town we can't put these laws on there that preserve the wildlife, preserve the trees, preserve the animals. Why is it that we're always worried about my cell phone clock turned off? So when it's 1.46 or 1.47, just let me know. Whatever the time for khutbah is, my khutbah is three minutes long. So just let me know I'll turn my phone off. Nobody looks at the clock time on their watch. Um, so now Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he got our mind together. That you know what, that, just don't live for yourself. Care for others, care for those around you. There was a story in Surah Yasin. Long story, <laughs> That when the three people, you know, when the, uh, Isa Islam sent two of the messengers to Antakya, and over there, they were, they were uh, calling towards uh, 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 the king to not worship idols. One of theirs' name was Shamroon. The second's name was Yuhanna. And the people were not listening to them. So then the third, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَعَزَّزْنَاهُ So we gave them a third one. We gave them a third supporter. Right, then three people were advising the town. Of you know what, that come worship Allah. The third guy's name was Bulis. Like the Arabic version of police. Bulis. <laughs> That's what, Ibn Kathir wrote this. So then, they be, the, 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 the nation belied them, the nation didn't believe them. And then one man came. His name was Habib. Right? And he was a carpenter. He had uh, white spots all over his body. And he was a sickly person. But the care he had and the love he had and the selflessness he had, Allah recorded in the Quran. Allah says, وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ مِنْ يَسْعَى Allah says, a man came. وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ رَجُلٌ It's nakira. It's, it's, it's uh, ambiguous. It's not, it's not a proper noun. And in the, in the Arabic language over here, it denotes the fact that he was a man of no class. وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ where did he come from? Allah even records. Remember, the Quran has only about 78,000 words in the entire Quran. 77,800 words in the entire Quran, approximately. But out of all the words Allah could choose, Allah is describing the action of this person who has no class. That the people around him never even cared about him. Allah paints the whole picture. He says, a man came. Min Aqsa Madina. You know what? He came from the corners of the city. It wasn't that he was in the city center. But he was, you know, when you, when you live in Manhattan or you live in... Uh, uh, Manhattan, you know, you're, you're balling. If you live in Jersey, then, you know, Jersey, you know, you look at the parking lot of New York. I live in Jersey too. But, uh, it's a lot more funnier when, funnier when you say to New Yorkers. When you say to New Jersey, they don't, you know. But, uh, so he, Allah says, you know what, he was living in the, he was living outside in the suburbs. But he came, Rajulun Yasa. You know what, he came. It wasn't that he was walking, he came running. Allah, took every single aspect of his action. This man came running and said, guys, listen, these people, they're, they're, they're proper people and they're proper messengers. Their message is correct. They want no money. They don't want anything. No, subhanAllah, nowadays, $30 if you want to hear tafsir. $40 if you want to learn Arabic. $80, I'm not saying I'm not going to charge you. It's a weakness amongst all of us. But this over there, that they never used to take anything. They never used to ask for any money, nothing. No accommodation, no food, no incentives, nothing. Their only job was that we want, to, we want to be selfless and help people. So Allah takes this whole image. And this man, he goes and he tries, uh, you know, helping these three messengers out. The community people said, hey, listen, you know what? Stay where you are. If you get too involved, we're going to cut you to pieces. But he, you know, he stayed steadfast because he cared. He was selfless. He cared for someone else. Remember, the point in this, the mansha, the, the purpose of the story is to think of someone else but yourself. So now this person, he tried and gave da'wah as much as he could. 
At the end, they killed him and cut him to pieces. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Qila dhulil jannah. Qila dhulil jannah. Allah said, you know what? You took a lot of pain in the dunya. Nobody liked you. Enter Jannah. When he entered Jannah, what do you think he said? If it was you and I, would be like, you know what? Where are those, where's that wine, that alcohol we always heard about? Where's all those, the, the hoods of Jannah or the palaces of Jannah? Or the food of Jannah? When he entered Jannah, the first thing he said was, Ya layta qawmi ya'lamoon. بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ He said, Ya Allah, I have one desire. In Jannah, every desire gets accepted. Ya لَيْتَ قَوْمِي يَعْلَمُونَ My only desire is to tell, let my people know how you forgave me and how good position you gave me. And how you gave me izzah and honor and respect. Ya لَيْتَ قَوْمِي يَعْلَمُونَ Allah took those words, put it in His Kitab. The kitab that cannot be changed and cannot be altered. For 1400 years, we all recite this in Surah Yasin. The words of a man who was a nobody, but he became an everybody. He became someone that we all recite about, we read about his story every single time we open Surah Yasin. Ya layta qawmi ya'lamun. Selflessness. It's not going to hurt you if you were to use an organic product. It's not going to hurt you if you cut down on your consumption. It's not going to hurt you if you're going to carpool. This is all part of being a good Muslim. A good Muslim just doesn't mean that, mashallah, you sit in that corner over there and you grab like 12 tasbihs. And you know, you put three musallas on top of each other. And you become Aladdin. That's not the purpose. <laughs> the purpose is that you become such a person. Wallahi, the Sahaba, and my time is finishing, I believe. Two minutes. The Sahaba had one slogan. And I say this everywhere. The Sahaba had one slogan. Kunu mithlana. Be like us. Your akhlaq, your character, your etiquette, everything. Let people look at you and say, hey, I want to be, be a Muslim. Look at these people. I told you guys before in the Tazkiyah class. So from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that from sadaqah jariya, or for getting reward, is that you plant a tree and anyone who eats the fruit from there, you'll get reward. So I said, how do you use that in Rutgers? Are you going to plant trees around here? Okay, it's good. But will it hurt you if you were to go to the store and buy a box of chips or buy some cakes or muffins and leave it somewhere where people are studying? Someone sees you with the Muslim, wear a Rutgers MSA shirt, wear a Rutgers Jummah, I don't care what organization you're with. Wear something that represents Islam. Let them see it. They say, mashallah, you know, they're not going to say mashallah. But, um, <laughs> but uh, they're going to look at them and say, you know what? We see these people. They come, we hear about them in the media, and we hear about them that they're so horrible people, but yo, that muffin comes in clutch. <laughs> so be that example. Let th they won't change from your salah. They're going to see you praying salah, they're going to think you're weird. You know, they still think you're weird, but that's not going to change. They're not going to become Muslim by seeing you pray salah. They'll become Muslim by your character. Change that. Become selfless. Care for others. That was the quality of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was known as what? Rahmatul lil alamin, the mercy for mankind. Alam is not even mankind. That's an incorrect translation. Alamin is the mercy for the universe. Whether it's the trees, whether it's the animals, whether it's the Muslims, whether it's the non-Muslims, being nice to somebody does not require them to be Muslim, and does not require them to pray five salah, five times salah, or go for Hajj. And now you can only be nice to them, but everyone else. You know what? You, you tell them, read between the lines. So inshallah, do dua that everyone here, inshallah, will start to change their actions, inshallah. No, nobody's going to change. No. Say inshallah. inshallah. So inshallah, do acts of kindness, do something, and have some type of, you know, we were, there was a, I'm going to end off with this story. Uh, I'll read really short surahs in Jummah. Um, <laughs> there was a person, there was a snowstorm in New York. And, uh, and I'm not debating the issue of Islamic clothes and not clothes. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking from an ethical and a moral uh, perspective. So there was a the snowstorm that was happened, you know, the couple of them that happened. All right? So I was in New York with one of my friends and we were at a gas station. And there were these five, six people, these like, you know, these, you know, British people, you know? Um, 
And we didn't know they were British. But anyway, we saw them carrying their luggage in the snow, in a blizzard. You can't even drive a car. My friend's M5 got stuck in the middle of the road. I don't know why he took it out, but it got stuck in the middle of the road. And these people are dragging their suitcases through the snow. So my friend tells me, he says, you know, Mufti Saab, can you go and uh, tell them that they can jump in the car and I'll take them to the train station. So then as I was getting out, he was like, you know, I'm not trying to disrespect you by telling you to leave. He's like, but the point is, is that if they see you, first thing, they'll get scared. <laughs> then when they see something nice come out from you, they'll remember this. So we went, you know, I told the British guy, I was like, hey, how are you? The guy's like, oh. And I was like, hey, man, listen, you know what? You guys need to go to the train station? He was like, yeah, I'm like, I got to go to the train station. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I was like, you know what? I got you. you know, just come in the car, we'll take you. First he was like, oh, all right. You know, he's like, well, he's like I'm not going to freeze anyway. Might as well. If that something happens, it happens. It was, a, it was a nice car, too. <laughs> so, so anyway, he went and he dropped him off. When my friend came back, he said these people were from England. And they said we were in Manhattan for God knows how many days. He said, this is the first time someone did a good Samaritan act. So whether he remembers anything about America or not, he's going to go back to England and he's going to say these things. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give everyone else the tawfiq of quulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum misaidu wa astaghfirullahi wa astaghfirullahi wa astaghfirullahi wa Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa وقال الله تعالى عز وجل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد بعدد من صلى وصاب وصل على محمد بعدد من قعد وقاب وصل على جميع الأصحاب رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين وعلى أزواجه المطهرات والبنات المطهرات اللهم أيد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أصلح شبابنا وشباب المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة